tell you that our program is slightly altered from what appears in the printed program. Unfortunately, Professor Deborah Majid is not able to be with us today, so we will only have three presentations rather than four. And we're going to try to end this session at four o'clock rather than 4.15 to allow for a half hour break between this panel and the next one. I know many people here have come from far away. I flew in from California this morning, um, and so I know everybody can use a little uh, rest, and, uh, and our brains are getting full after every panel, so um, we'll try to end at 4 o'clock. Um, we have three um, wonderful presentations in this panel on gender and generational relations, and the first is from Professor Simone Tersini, from the University of Rennes 2 in France, and it is entitled <coughs> Gender Tension Between Islam in France and Islam of France. And she um, is going to move from her chair to the podium and back um, as she has some slides to show us to accompany her presentation. And I think we might move so that we can see them. No, you can, you can stay put, but we'll just move our chairs. So that, yeah, just we'll so, no move so we can be in the audience and we can see them. Right. All right? So you can stay. You can do what you like. <laughs> But 
will later on gradually diminish in relation with the deterioration of working condition of working conditions, the increase of unemployment rate, the closure of many factories. In the 90s, there is a shift in the focus on Islam. By separating more and more immigration and Islam, a new category emerges, emerges as belonging to what is now considered to be the, the Islam of France. French young women with migrant backgrounds, uh, especially uh, Islamist girls with hard scarf in particular, the shift from those we don't know whether they will say or not to French men and women with specific, with specific origins. Their assignment to a position that is external to the nation cities being attributed to the cultural criteria and emphasized religious criteria. As a matter of fact, in the 90s, the, the Muslim culture replaces the 80s focus on the culture of origin. While under the label of original culture, prayer rooms in the factories had been tolerated with the idea that migrant workers could only return to their country. Muslim culture will be assigned to the French men and women with backgrounds and they reappropriated it. Also treated as a problem of public order primarily related to French men and women with backgrounds, this Islam of France evokes first at first a origin of expectation or of suspicion. The issue of Islam in Europe is today a political urgency. The, the presence of Muslims is inevitable and without backtracking the question and the change for all Muslims and non-Muslims non -Muslims, is whether Islam in Europe can be, become Islam from Europe in connection with translated Islam. <coughs> Then, the idea of a rupture with the forms of, vis of visibility of migrant workers because many young mi Muslims go to mosque to pray, but create alternative spaces around educational and cultural activities to equate their faith with their social life, as Cesare uh, wrote in 1909. This gradual movement of Islam in France to Islam from France uh, means, means recognizing that most of these young Muslims were born French and educated in France, of course. The underlying design of public space reduced politics to the categories of public action and to a grammar of belonging that is understood sees its implementation as problematic. Finally, the gradual concentration of research on youngsters with migrant backgrounds mostly focused on girls wearing the eye scarf in the public space and in the public schools in particular, and is, and is mostly looking at its articulation with regimes of citizenship. However, the political legitimacy of the identification of citizenship as a problem that must lead to a legislative response is ignoring scientific analysis. Al Valeria Miro uh, wrote uh, in 2005, in 200. <laughs> what is the outcome of that? The 2004 law which bans the headscarf in public school of the Republic of Fact divided the feminist movement in France. Ni plus ni soumis were favorable to the law and coupling sexism and headscarf versus representative of French materialist <coughs> feminism such as Christine Delphi, within the feminist collective for equality that also includes 
young Muslim women with backgrounds which refer to Islam as a vehicle for the claim of individual rights. Moroccan Muslim feminist Lamrabet is the founder of a current president of the International Group for Study and Reflection on Women in Islam, GRC. And it illustrates the transnational dimension of this dynamics. These Muslim feminist groups include Muslim women from Europe, North America, North African countries, and from the Middle East. East. It illustrated, it illustrated the, the opportunity provided by identification with Eastern for Muslim women to de develop transnational dynamics. International Congress and Symposia, organized by Muslim feminists like the Barcelona uh, two, 2005 Congress, illustrated the le legitimacy of sharing experience and Muslim feminist discourses well beyond the context of migration. The division are not so much on the op opposition between migratory contexts and countries where Islam is the majority. The differences is in the GRC are related to the consideration of the sacred, sacred religious texts and the relation to the Sunnah. Considering the transnational dynamics of Islam that I have shortly presented with the example about the Muslim families, how can we still say to today that the more Islam is becoming French, nationalized and acculturated to the national context, the more it seems overtaken by migration. These have been investigated in local context. For example, for example, uh, the work of Vincent Gesser and uh, Ali uh, in Marseille illustrated this constant interaction between the newly migrants, former migrants, and descendants of migrants about worship. <coughs> this is important because already in quantitative, in quantitative terms, we know that in France, the ever-increasing number of Muslims depend, depends mainly on legal immigration, family ramification in marriage, the, arri the arrival of skilled workers and asylum seekers, and only illegal immigration moves. This would maintain a stable population increase of nearly over 6,100 uh, who are migrants without visa, originating mainly from Asia and North and Central Africa. Part two. <coughs> Which are the Muslim figures uh, that are forgotten in this shift from Muslim in France to Muslims from France. My answer is that looking at migrant mothers and their children could help us to identify them. For what heuristic purpose is it important to understand Islam about migrant mothers and their children? I have analyzed the identification to Islam and positioning of social actors in France who did not seem relevant as Muslim actors, neither in public policy nor in research. Uh, in French society, women, uh, I mean, uh, Muslim women, Muslim migrants, have been reduced to something uh, uh, really not interesting, something like a cultural tradition basket or something like a cultural tradition garbage. And they they, these women uh, seem to be uh, they also dangerous for the uh, Israelized daughter. Furthermore, some theories of ethnic boundary, especially in Daniel Juppé's world, which uh, is one of the few to take into account the position of parental transmission, present a passive process of incorporation of ethnicity by the children. Juto uh, wrote, has the primary persons in charge of newborn babies, mothers contribute within a relationship of body care, emotional and intellectual development of human beings to humanize and emphasize their, their children. 
research that were limited to the study in production and the reproduction of ethnicity from the perspective of a women's position have neglected the active role of children in, process, in the process of transmission. They forgot that. Indeed, the children can also be studied from the perspective of unexpected displays produced in the course of interactions that are innocuous choices within the process of transmission. So, my last part. We can ask now how can young children contribute to modify the parental orientation while presenting themselves as Muslims. For example, this is the meaning of the cry aloof aloof that I heard from young boys I go to cinema during school vacation and it is also the set for young girls a scarf roped around the neck and covering the hairline to pretend to be wearing a scarf. Uh, in early afternoon, during the winter holidays, an educator from Ladyberg and myself accompanied a dozen students from primary school to see a movie. <coughs> On leaving the, the Paris metro, a Suleiman loses one of its uh, contact lenses. This has already happened before. It is in despair until some, someone finds it. The teacher then accompanied Suleiman to the pharmacy and suggested that I do visit to the church with his opposite to the place we were with the other student. Answering the teacher's suggestions, I have been thinking of involving the parents for a while. They are not very open-minded. There is nothing wrong in visiting a church in looking at the interior the same way as we visit mosque in, uh, in Egypt. I made uh, the proposal to the group, telling that a church can be visited as a museum and not viewed solely as a place of worship. The answer is a very negative. Our parents do not want us to do that. We have no right to go inside a Christian church. They shout, laughing, aloof, aloof, peep, peep. These students consider the invitation of entering the church as a form of violation. Their first reaction lies is invoking a normative reference that their parents may object at their visit of the church. This also shows that they inter internalized a universe of meanings in which Christianity, places of worship, conceptual form, represent a cultural difference that may them that may make them impure. impure. To say peep in Arabic I can possibly reinforce a physical distance that they want to keep when they pronounce a it, we are still outside the church. Relying here on the symbolic performance while the French educator is threatening to cancel it under the pretext of opening their minds. These children position themselves as a minority through their bodies but also through specific tools such as clothing or language, they are available in the social space. However, uh, these tools uh, were not necessarily intended to be used in that way by Muslim kids to perform a Muslim, a Muslim identity. They don't always behave as children would, for instance, displaying or not the Islam in which they cheat on their faith the way their parents, educators, and teachers would or could expect. This is what we found in the interaction mentioned here, in front of the church, in Paris, and in, in the following discussion with their parents. These are the books and toys that some of them are likely to receive. I can show something. For boys. You can see colors like pink or blue. Uh, these Islamic books and toys that some of them are likely to receive are a way of reminding them what would be the right way to act as amusing children and to suggest that they should do for their group of belonging, the Muslim of friends. But 
they may also use such tools by passing the sexual and religious implicit messages they embody. Whether intentional or unconscious based on small daily habits, such as the use of invocation dua of before bedtime, or they are made of clear parental request for children to pray when they are seven years old, this setting can lead a healer to focus on your parents, reducing children to passive receptacles or endorse this neglect of children in migration situations. The astonishment of mothers, which I narrated at the episode, the episode of the church, is of the same magnitude as that of many parents learned that their daughter, in a later age, means take the veil. Many of them feel that they missed something in education and the, the position vis-à-vis -vis the French society. Many parents believe that their children, regardless of age, have no incentive to pub publicly display their Islam. Mothers know that they are positioned with their daughters on issues of modesty and purity. Maintaining this values in that leads to a future that may produce sexual and reproductive future news news. The young women of North Africa doesn't manage a modest rights in relation to specific roles and gender relations. This modest is built under the, the eyes of daily normative mothers. However, the effects of the implication of modesty that sometimes end up surprising the mothers themselves and some are sometimes struck by the reaction they consider excessive share of their daughters. Moreover, they cannot put themselves with the same face. My aim is to focus on the element necessary in the parental transmission of both sides. How these elements are reappropriated in the interaction by these young children it depends on the margins of manoeuvre of the age, generational situations, and gender relations. Indeed, trying to focus on the privatization of Islam, many researchers have pointed to the lack of religious guidance or deficit in religious transmission for French men and French women with bad ones. But it seems more interesting to see how children are positioned against multiple configuration of transmission. In other cases, these settings can lead the hydro to focus only on parents, reducing children to passive receptacles, nor endorse this neglect of childhood and migration situation. Or to take literally the young women who adhere to a scholarship Islam, who said that they had cut, had cut a maternal transmission feeding a system of horizontal transmission with girls their own age in the context of women's circles needs knowledge about Islam a la carte. Strategies of the Eternal First Generation, a study of Turkish immigrants in France. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be with you this afternoon. I thank especially Usman for inviting me. But I think I have a very hard task to speak as the last speaker of the session after lunch this sunny afternoon in New York. You are all tired. I'm completely jet lagged. It's time to go to bed. Me, uh, after my warm milk, after all these excellent presentations, I'm a little bit afraid. I hope that we won't sleep during the half an hour which is coming. Uh, yes, I will try to, to give some, some information on the Turkish migrants uh, living in France, 
Uh, even the title, the term of Turks in France is a problematic title. Uh, we know that uh, approximately there are 200,000 approximately Turkish citizens living in France and the, we estimate that there are 200,000 French citizens but Turkish background living in France. It's difficult to calculate because we don't have for French citizens, we don't have statistics. They can be double, they can have a double citizenship or single French citizenship, so it's difficult to calculate. But we consider that we have approximately 400,000 people related to Turkey. One way or another related to Turkey because they are not all ethnically Turks. There is a huge minority within the minority, within the people uh, coming from Turkey, which is uh, the Kurdish minority, of course, and uh, all these 400,000 people are Muslims. We do not include in this in the way of calculating and identifying Turks and people originating from Turkey, we are not including all the non-Muslims originating from Turkey but living in France, Armenians, for example, 500,000. Uh, uh, French citizens, Armenians are coming from Turkey, but other non-Muslim uh, populations also, Syriacs, uh, uh, Chaldeans, etc., etc. So we are talking about the Muslims, but belonging to Muslims, to Islam, not the liberals, of course, we don't know the statistics uh, or practice in belonging to, to, to Islam. And even for that, we have some problems because approximately 20%, 20 to 30% of this Turkish minority in France uh, belongs to the Alevi religion. So to put this uh, this group uh, within the group of Muslims is problematic because they they have a different discourse, different claims, etc., etc. You see that the statistic figures are uh, are difficult. The story, the history of uh, people originating from Turkey in France is very well known. After 1964. Uh, the bilateral agreement between France and Turkey, like all other migrations, it's a very well-known migration, coming in France as workers, and then after 1974, after the end of the, uh, the agreement, uh, um, they, they could bring their wives and children, uh, and it became a real minority in, uh, in France. Uh, half of this population, we think are born in France. This is the problem of the generation. I'm listening to you uh, since this morning. I've learned much, and thank you very much for all these communications. Uh, but we are, I have the impression, that we are using this term of second generation as it was something very natural and normal. We know all that this term, even the concept of second generation, is a very, very problematic concept. What do we call the second generation? Is it enough to be born in France or to be educated in France? Or maybe it must be people born in France from parents born in France. Which one? Both of our parents or one of these parents are enough, etc. Et we have many, many problems with this term of uh, second uh, generation. And I think that there is the Turkish specificity. Uh, the Turkish specificity, people originating from Turkey, Turkish not ethnically, but uh, geographically Turkish specificity. Uh, since 1980s, uh, many studies underline this specificity. I think too much. There is no one single Turkish group which is completely different from the other minorities in, uh, in France or in Western Europe in general, but in this case, of generation case, I think there is a specificity, and I will try to, uh, to explain and underline some, uh, some characteristic. Uh, why there is this specificity? Many explanations. For example, it is a late migration after 1960s. There is no uh, migration, substantial migration from Turkey uh, towards Western Europe before 1960s, so late during the time. Uh, it is also a group without French culture. It's very funny because 
I mean, all these migration in France, uh, we are separating people from ex colonies uh, uh, who know uh, the French language, this French language, but who has a, a difficult relationship between friends, colonized, not colonized, etc. So there is no this history between France and Turkey, this proximity of hate and love between uh, France and Turkey, even if there is a ideological history between France and Turkey, because the Turkish Revolution has a, a, a part of his basis from the French Revolution and the French idea of nation-state. And this is maybe also one of the reasons of the specificity, because the Turkish uh, what, view of nation-state, exclusivist identity, is very similar to French exclusivist identity. The same rules of constructing the, the, the building, the nation, uh, nation building process are going on in Turkey and in France. That's why maybe the Turkish identity and French identity are rival identities. Concurrency between Turkish and French identity is difficult to construct a discourse of double belonging to the Frenchness and to the, um, to the uh, Turkishness. And uh, uh, even for the religion, I mean, we were talking uh, with Simona about this uh, Islam of, from France, Islam of France, Islam in France, French Islam, I didn't use the term, but French Islam is, uh, this is very, very well known, the territorialization of the religion of nation states, each nation state wants to territorialize, nationalize the religion, religious belonging, it is going on in France, and it is going on in Turkey also. So this territorialization of the uh, religion, the Turkish kind of Islam and the French kind of Islam, the process are very similar, but there is a concurrency between these uh, two processes. So maybe that's why also there is this, uh, this uh, specificity. Um, the idea of uh, the transformation from an empire, very strong empire, to the nation state, less strong nation state, are similar in France and in Turkey is proud of being an empire and dominating the world, but to be less strong today, uh, but in the nation state, a nationalistic approach of the nation state are similar. So you see that uh, there is this specificity of identity building, especially for multiple uh, identity in the Turkish uh, in the Turkish case. I will discuss, I will try to discuss this uh, um, uh, concept of second generation. Uh, I think, but will try to explain myself. I think that we are, in the case of Turks, in what I called, in some articles, uh, what I called a strategy of perpetual first generation. I don't think that there is a second or third generation of Turks in, in, uh, in France. I started to think about that, about this strategy of perpetual first generation in 2002. In 2002, they asked me, so I'm working at Strasbourg University, I teach in two different departments, the International Relations Institute and the Turkish Studies Department. Okay? And this Turkish Studies Department, uh, we have many, many courses on Turkish language, Turkish civilization, Turkish history, uh, sociology, etc. Uh, et and in 2002, uh, the French Ministry of National Education asked me to participate in the juries of baccalaureate, oh, I don't know how to say in English baccalaureate, you know, the final exam uh, of the uh, high school, for Turkish. Turkish language and Turkish civilization. So uh, pupils, students, high school students, can take the Turkish language and history as one of their courses, and then they have a written exam, and then they pass the oral exam, the back or uh, oral exam, and we discuss in Turkish, and I have to evaluate their degree of Turkey, in Turkish language and Tur Turkish culture, history, etc., etc. So I started to do that between 2002 and 2005. During three years, I was a jury of the uh, baccalaureate. So uh, I had the chance to see approximately 800 French young men and young women 18, 19 years old, with Turkish background. So most of all, maybe all, are born in France, and for some of them, their parents are born in France. At the end of the conversation, during the oral, I was giving the text, 
reading in Turkish, so asking some question of text, comprehension, etc., etc., I started to ask the first and the main question when a Turkish guy uh, uh, meets another Turkish guy is the question of where are you from? This is indeed. Uh, we asked Mujahid uh, and Ahmed, it was our first question, maybe, where are you from? Before even the name, the asking the name. It's very, very, the, the micro belonging in Turkish society is a very, very important thing. And I was telling to myself uh, that I will make some statistics. I will see in, from which uh, region of France they are coming, Alsace, Paris, etc., etc. The first and the second and the third and the tenth, etc., gave all the same answer. The village or the city from Turkey. I started to make statistics, so I was waiting. The, the first student will tell me I'm from Paris, I'm from Agano, I'm from Strasbourg. 100? No. And I was asking them, come on, uh, when did you come to France? Very young, I thought, no, no, I was born in, I'm born in, in, uh, in France, okay, my parents also are born in that, but still, still, the second, third generation were giving this place, this micro belonging place, as their, some people, some young people, answered, I am living in Kaisi. It's far from Kaisi, you can just for me. For the answer, no, 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 my, my address is at Agano, it's at Strasbourg, in Paris, yes, but I live in Kaiser. never been in Kaiser, but I live in, uh, in Kaiser, in a very, very broken Turkish. So, I was asking, to myself, what is that? What is that? What is this, you know, this link to the geographical origin, to the parents and even grandparents? And then I tried to develop this idea of strategy of first uh, generation. I think that this strategy exists and this strategy uses three types of agents of transmission of identity to obtain, to keep always the first generation there in France. That the generations born in France, educated in France, socialized in France, feel, feel the same things towards Turkey than the parents and the grandparents. It's a strategy, we will see if it's, it succeeds or, uh, or not. The first agent of transmission of identity, national identity, Turkish identity, or even Kurdish identity, though it is a little bit different, just take the tur Turkish identity, uh, uh, teachers, language and the Turkish civilization teachers. There are two types of Turkish education in the French system. We have, I think there are uh, nine for all friends, Turkish language citizens of the French educational system, only nine, so nothing, zero. They have few uh, children, few students, but 90%, maybe 95% of the education of the Turkish language and Turkish civilization history are made by what we call ELCO. Uh, this morning somebody talked about ELCO. ELCO is Enseignement de Langue et Culture d'Origine, uh, uh, the education of the culture and language from the originated country, and they are sent by the Turkish government. They are paid by the Turkish government, and they give, they make some, some classes in the French public schools. But not during the school hours, Wednesdays afternoon or, or, or the weekends. And to be French citizens, <coughs> young men and young uh, girls, are going, are following these uh, courses in the French school, but given by Turkish, Turkish citizens, Turkish uh, teachers. So just put one side this language uh, courses. But just to understand that in all surveys about the Turkish language, in France, everybody answered, all parents, all parents answered that they want to have teachers from Turkey. Authenticity, to be from Turkey, to, be, to, to speak the real Turkish, etc. They don't have, uh, they don't want even that their own children, educated children, become the, the teachers of, of the Turkish language. I mean, it's a problem for us because in the 
the Department of Turkish Studies, we have this, you know, the source we can educate the, uh, the teachers for Turkish language, Turkish studies, they do not want. They want to be related, linked directly to the original, to the authentic Turkishness uh, via these uh, teachers. So the first agent of transmission, the, the language and the language, yes, especially the language, not only history, but especially the, the language. We know that. In the minority situation, what we call identity uh, has two legs, language and uh, religion. We know that it is difficult to transmit the minority language in the majority uh, situation. And the, the religion becomes, in the minority uh, situation, the main identification, even to the ethnicity and to the national identity, national evidence. So, the second agent of transmission of identity, of Turkishness are imams, of course. We made a study in 2002 and 2003 on imams uh, with the colleague of mine, uh, Frank Fregosi, a good politologist, um, uh, political scientist, excuse me, and we tried to understand what, who are these imams working in France, so as in charge of Turkish imams. And so this study has been published in 2004 uh, on imams in, in, uh, in France. And I noticed that, we noticed that uh, approximately 60% of imams, Turkish imams, working in the French mosques, Turkish French mosques, are sent by the Turkish government. Between uh, 1964, and 1983, so during 20 years, the Turkish government uh, were very far from the uh, from these migrants settled in France, in Germany, in the Balkans countries. During these 20 years, brotherhoods, associations, political Islam, especially Milli Görüş, the national vision opened some mosques in France and in Germany. The center was and is uh, always Cologne in Germany. And, but even those people imported from Turkey some imams coming in, in Germany, in France, in the Benelux country, in the Netherlands and uh, in Belgium to work in the Turkish mosques. After 1983, when the Turkish government started to send these imams via uh, DITIB, the Anatishtib Islam, uh, religious affairs, uh, the Union, Tur Turkish Muslim Union, it's the name of the, the institution of the office. Even after that, associations which are not in the network of the official Turkish state uh, network, they continue to use, to employ imams coming freshly from Turkey now. When we, when we uh, 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 conducted this study in 2002, I was in touch with approximately uh, 80 imams in the Turkish mosques. No one single imam were in France for more than two years. All imams were coming freshly from Turkey, which is very interesting for us, because after 2007, recently, we started in France a real debate, as you know, training imams, the French imams, knowing the French language, the French tradition, the French way of life, the French democratic, republican imams. And some initiatives have been taken uh, uh, for training imams in France, especially, as you know, uh, maybe, the Catholic Institute of Paris started a program of training imams. It's very funny to see that people are going to the Catholic Institute uh, uh, to be imams and uh, then employed uh, in the French mosques. In Strasbourg, we started in 2008, so last year, a program of Master of Islamology to train some uh, Muslim what, intellectuals, not imams, but intellectuals who will be uh, the interlocutor between the French society and the Muslim uh, community. So, to see if there was an attempt and a reception of all these training programs, 
we made a survey in 2009, just last year. So I was in charge of the, of the Turkish mass also. I went to all these Turkish mass, I explained the, the case, we are trying to uh, uh, to build the training program for imams, what do you think? Uh, maybe you will uh, you will hire one of these imams for your mass, etc. etc. Approximately 90% of the answers was no, of course. Imams must come from Turkey. Even our imams, people who are from the Turkish community, from their community, uh, having a train here in France are not considered as authentic, original, uh, cap capable, cap capable to make, to, to be imams in the Turkish mosque. So, still today, a specificity of the Turkish community, it is not the case for the Moroccan and Algerian community, which are accepting these imams training in, uh, in France. The specificity of the Turkish community is still importing imams from, uh, from Turkey. In that sense, it's very difficult for the Turkish community in France to be included in this discourse of territorialization of Islam, the French Islam, because imams, the main you know, uh, religious ministers in here in, in France, are coming yesterday from Turkey. And for that, for that reason also, it is very, it's, it's a huge mistake to consider all these imams more than what they are doing as social agents, you know, uh, uh, to be media between uh, the society and the minority, etc. Because they do not speak French, and they are lost themselves. I was calling to, to ask to all these imams, so we will have an interview with you. Could you please give me the address of your mosque? Uh, well, no one, no one. If we, complete loss. Uh, uh, one year, two years, three years in France without French uh, language in a small uh, community. So. In, that, in these conditions, it is very difficult to see the Turkish community in this discourse of constructing a French Islam, territorialized, nationalized, nationalized French uh, Islam. So, the second agent of transmission of identity, the Turkishness, to be in direct uh, uh, link with Turkey and Turkish Islam. And the third one, this is related to what you were saying about the endergonomy, I think that the um, the, the main uh, thing important for important from Turkey to France today are young men and young women. Statistically, Turks, people from Turkey in France, are not married statistically. The non-Turks, so mixed marriages are in existence, are absent, just the footnote, all marriages are, are mixed, we cannot marry ourselves. So. But mixed, culturally mixed uh, <laughs> marriages between Turks and French, yes, we know that. But again, statistically, Turks are not marrying Turks in France either. All young men and young women brides are imported from Turkey. It is an endogamy, yes, you are right, it's a micro endogamy. It is not based on the national belonging. It is not based on only on the religious belonging, but regional micro-belonging. So today, approximately, uh, I think the, the, the figure was 94%, uh, I don't remember, we conducted the study in 2004 with Carl Fangio and Stefan Dutapia. Uh, uh, all children born in France, so we can consider them in our conception as second generation, generation have at least one of two parents coming freshly from Turkey and in majority mothers. So the transmission of the identity of the Turkish Turkishness uh, is through all these mothers coming freshly, fresh flow to friends uh, for the language, for the religion, traditions, behavior, <coughs> vision, the way of seeing the world, how to speak, how to eat, all the cultural are given by these mothers coming just a week ago from uh, Turkey. In, under these conditions, to consider this population, these kids born in France as a second generation, 
I think uh, it's a mistake. It's a conceptual uh, uh, mistake. And in addition, I'm finishing. In addition, the globalization makes that it is very easy to make to have this circulation of migration physically to go to Turkey to come back. It's two one hour uh, hours. It is very easy to have some products from Turkey, some some food, clothes to produce them in, in Europe, but also information for a for a Turkish house. The television is the aquarium of the Turkish house. Always open, always switch out the something. Always, so uh, they are. They are always uh, under the source of information from, uh, from Turkey. It helps to keep this um, this uh, identity, etc. But it is still a strategy. I will finish for that. This strategy exists to give the identity of the first generation. But in reality, we know that this identity is dynamic. We know that the discourse of being Turk from Turkey is a strong discourse among these young people, but still in this dynamic identity there is a mix of being French and being Turkish. It is very interesting to see that. Before 2000, among our students, Turkish background students, we started to hear the discourse of multiple identity, we are French and Turks at the same level, etc. When the Turkish, uh, when Turkey became the official candidate to the European Union, the discourse in France had been radicalized against Turkey, not because Turkey wasn't in Europe, but Turks weren't Europeans. And by reaction, after 2000, we started to hear an exclusivist identity uh, uh, discourse from Turks also, where we are only Turks, we are not French. But in reality, of course, they say this in French. I mean, you see, uh, we can see that this mix of uh, the construction, the building of a new identity of a new minority in France is an ongoing process, an existing process. Strategy exists, but I think and I hope it is uh, condemned to fail. Thank you very much for your attention. We have a lot of uh, empirical material and also theoretical insights on the table for discussion. And I'd like to invite anyone in the audience who would like to make a comment or ask a question or contribute some other uh, uh, empirical data to the conversation would be great. When you do speak, if you could please introduce yourself and say where you're from and come to the microphone to speak. Thank you. Mohammed Nimmer, American University. I want to raise an ethical question, uh, the same question I raised on uh, the Muslim Brotherhood in America. I want to raise it uh, regarding the behavior of the uh, of the French nationalists. Uh, and I'm going to use the same approach looking at nationals or citizens with foreign attachment applying this idea to France. Uh, so from what I learned from the presentations uh, all, all day, uh, France allows imported imams paid by foreign governments, tolerates the interference of foreign governments in elections uh, in minority communities in France, and they allow uh, Turkish uh, foreign teachers to come and teach uh, non-French culture to, uh, to public students in France and then question the, uh, the freshness of, of their own citizens. I think uh, if, if this is something wrong, you brought it on yourselves and you have to just acknowledge that you are dealing with uh, with, with, a, uh, with a situation where you have French citizens in a, in a global age, uh, France is actually benefiting by making those minority communities self-reliant because if, uh, if they cannot support themselves for those basic needs, the French government will have to pay for them and yet they allow up foreign governments to pay for them and then you go after your own citizens and tell them how French are you. I think there is an ethical question to be asked uh, stemming from this situation. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your uh, May I just, just say two, and two sentences. You are right, but I will be very cynical. Until the creation of CFCRM, 
the French Council of Muslim Cult. For French government, all French government, all these imported imams paid by these foreign countries were very good. Because one, of course, they were paid by the foreign countries and not by France. But second, they were controlled by the foreign countries. All these foreign countries were controlling the discourse of these imams. And when there is a problem with all these imams with the discourse, they can have a bilateral agreement between France and this, uh, these countries, Morocco, Algeria, and, uh, and Turkey. After the creation of CICM, the idea of France became the building of French, uh, what, uh, French Islam, and maybe now today France is capable to control this, all his own imams. That's why we see today all these training, uh, training for programs for, uh, for imams. But without these agreements between France and third, third countries, for France it was seen as a danger, clearly as a danger. So to have some free imams, they prefer to have imams controlled by Morocco, by Algeria, by, by Turkey, and paid by, uh, by Turkey. So it is not humanistic or multicultural approaches uh, which are allowing the arrival of these imams. It is really cynical and secretarian approach, I think. Um, I thought that uh, Somalia uh, wrote a, a paper about uh, the logical temptation of the French government, about Islam, after the, the creation of uh, the CFCN. And uh, that's right, because uh, they control Islam and they say to Islam how to have to to, to, to practical the, the cult. May I, uh, just one word. The CFCM, we uh, heard about CFCM, real elected council of Turkey, uh, of Turkish, uh, Muslim cult in France, on two cases. The first was the headscarf issue. It became the, uh, what, the voice of the government to explain to the uh, field, what was, why it was forbidden and stuff. The second, when two French journalists have been kidnapped in Iraq, they went to Iraq to explain that France wasn't a country against Islam, that they have to leave uh, these, uh, 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 these two journalists. That's all. That's all. It is a real artificial, artificial institution constructed by France in this temptation to control the territorial uh, is that it's a very Turkish way of uh, thinking. I mean, on that point of view, Turkey is a, the Diyanet, the religious affairs directory administration of Turkey, it became an example. Uh, I'm Barbara Pearl. I'm wondering if the Turkish Kurds identify less as Kurds and more as Kurdish once they get there, or what the situation is. Well, I understand the question. Turkishness, Turkishness has three different uh, definitions. The first definition of Turkishness is a legal one. Article 66 of the Turkish Constitution is saying that people who are linked to the Turkish Republic by the link of the, the citizenship are Turks. But on that point of, point of view, Kurds legally are Turks. And because there is no Kurdistan recognized, well, but they are counted as a Turk in the statistics. But they can have, of course, their ethnic identity. The second identification of the Turkishness is to be Muslim. Turkish speaker, but Muslim. Not only Muslim, but Muslim, Sunni, Hanefi, etc. Et Even for Alevis, there are some, uh, some problems. And the third identification, third definition, is a racial one. All the Turks from Central Asia, until um, the Balkans, the Turkish nation, the blood, etc., blood, etc., etc. Kurds are more and more in identifying themselves as Turks and claiming even their Kurdishness. Two reasons to that. First of all, Kurds participated in the Turkish migration uh, after 1960s to the Western Europe, and there they found a more liberal environment to express their identity, it was quite impossible in Turkey, it was quite impossible until when, until at the end of 1990s it was impossible, even the word wasn't, I mean, pronounceable uh, in Turkey. And secondly, today, the Kurdishness became one of the main problems debate in Turkey, and it's free to, to, 
to express it, uh, that even if there are many, many uh, problems. So, Kurds in Western Europe are sometimes with Turks, but often uh, they constitute a, a, a real, identical, and, uh, and ethnical, uh, ethnical group. Just there is a problem, some Kurds, because of their simulationist uh, uh, um, uh, uh, policies in Turkey, uh, are not Kurdish speakers. So they have, there is a linguistic problem, but other Kurds are Kurdish speakers, and so they constitute a special group. And more, uh, you know, it's not the majority, but most of them are Alevis. There are some other views in Kurdish groups. Questions or comments? I saw your hand over here. Can you come and speak at the microphone so we have a record of it? Thank you. I wanted to be just a little bit of Turkish family, so when I did my PhD thesis, so I was very glad. It's to... not my Turkish family. Yeah, I, I, I pronounce this word Turkish family. No, but uh, my Turkish family. Okay, <laughs> Turkish families, I always they did a bit of Turkish families in France. But first of all, thank you very much for your uh, different intervention. Uh, but just a comment about the Turkish <coughs> population in France when I investigated and uh, I, uh, I met some parents and thanks to children, I was able to do a few interviews with parents. Thanks to children because indeed, after 30, year, 30, year, 30 years in France, parents were not able to speak uh, in, uh, in, in, in French. I was impressed by the ability of parents to transmit a broadness of origin. So I think it's also important to, to emphasize this because in many families, for example, North African families, there is no progress of origin, and we understand it very well because colonization, war between France and uh, Algeria, from the future Algeria, uh, independent Algeria, it's not necessarily um, a source of progress. Whereas in some Turkish families, I was um, impressed by uh, the fact that some father they like to talk about Mustafa Kemal. They like to talk about the past of Turkey. And that's why, for example, a father in one family was pleased to meet, to meet you, not because uh, it was pleased to do an interview, but just he was so pleased to speak about Turkey with a big poster of uh, Mustafa Kemal in the living room. And a, 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 cons a permanent link with Turkey through the television, because it's not the TF1 and uh, France 2, it's the Turkish television. I think this idea of broadness is, is important and perhaps, perhaps it's something positive, by the way. Uh, it's not a normative point of view that I have, but uh, we may also admire this ability to transmit progress of origin. My question for you is about, don't you think that the, the, the strong belonging with, regard, with respect to Turkey in, in Turkish population is also a question, a challenge for France. To what extent does is, is no, to what extent is France able to value ethnic minority groups and their belongings? Is France in, involved in this work? Well, yes, the answer will be very true. It is a huge channel. I do not think that it's a positive thing. It's uh, approximately eight years of brainwashing made that uh, the Turkish education uh, gave to the all the Turkish generation the Turks must be proud to be Turks and Turkish nationalism, etc. But it creates an exclusivist identity. Also, it's very difficult to consider himself uh, itself uh, at the same time Turk and something else, as it is very difficult to consider himself uh, French and something, something else. I think that the multiple identity is very difficult in the French framework. In the French context, for Turks specifically, it's a double challenge. For Turkey, Turkish identity, and, and the French identity. Well, it's a real challenge to change the patterns of identity in France, but also in Turkey, to, to be able to build this, uh, this multiple identity. Charles Navour, the uh, famous Armenian singer of France, were saying, I feel myself 
100% French and 100% Armenian. It is difficult to say that for, for, for French people and for the Turkish people to feel themselves 100% something and 100% there is no percentage of the uh, identity. So I think it is a challenge, but I don't think that it's, it's so positive. Uh, my name is Carl Meyer. I'm from New York and Connecticut. 100% and 100%. 100%. <laughs> uh, and I'm fascinated that you're in Strasbourg, and I'm wondering to what extent, intuitively or by direct evidence, that your description of the Turkish community in France also applies to Germany, Italy, the Scandinavian countries, Denmark, Belgium. Is it a Europe-wide phenomenon? Well, there is a specificity of the French context. I have to confess. In Germany, it's a little bit, a little bit different because the 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 markets, the marriage market is, is broader in Germany. There are three, one, two and a half billion people people coming from Turkey in Germany. There are many many uh, marriages between Germans, second, third generation, and Turks coming freshly from from Turkey, but less than in uh, in France. It is exactly the case in Belgium. And in the Netherlands, it is not the case in Sweden and in Scandinavian countries where uh, there are some ethnic specificities. In Scandinavia, there are many Kurds and non Muslim people coming from Turkey, especially Syriacs, Chaldeans, uh, etc. So we can talk about the French specificity. Second, French specificity is the, this approach of the exclusivist belonging, which is not the case for the Netherlands, for example. It will be come the case now, nowadays, during uh, just for two or three years in, in the Netherlands, they are uh, questioning their model of multicultural belonging in the Dutchness also, but the Frenchness as an exclusive identity makes that the French content is specific one. Can I add something to that? I, I, I need to add to the Netherlands I believe that the research on Muslims in the Netherlands, so I thought Post Post no, no. <laughs> you can you can answer better than me. Yeah, no, so After P14, I mean, we are changing. Yeah, well, I, I, I use a lot of uh, large field data sets, and I was just, just going to say that when you said we find as well that people say, in qualitative studies, people say, well, you know, my child can marry anyone as long as he's Muslim, he's from Morocco, or Turkey, or Sri Lanka, or whatever. But in fact, our, our data show it doesn't happen 98% marriages within the group, although also second generation, but still uh, uh, around, uh, well, more than half are also imported. So mm -hmm. I, I, I never like that term, imported. Anyway, it is yeah. Yeah, but it the main like, product. Yeah. product. <laughs> yeah. No, but so in fact, the yeah, there are some specificities, I guess, to France, but still, mm -hmm. it is the same picture. And also, the relation between identifying with Turkey and identifying as Dutch, as well as the relation to identifying as Muslim and identifying as Dutch are negative. So people who feel more Dutch feel less Turkish, and people who feel, who feel that they are that being a Muslim is more important to them, that they are strongly religious, also feel less Dutch and more Turkish or Moroccan. So yeah, we do see that that it's sort of in some way conflicting these these identities. So I just wanted to. Thank you. I'm going to wrap it up. We went up after 4 o'clock because there were so many things that people wanted to talk about, which is great. We're going to reconvene at 4.30 for the final panel of the afternoon. So um, get some coffee, stretch your legs, get a little sun, and we'll be back at 4.30.